Hello, this is Tofu from Trifill Production with another Blender quick tip for beginners. And in this quick tip, I'm going to introduce to you a new add-on that's called Easy HDRI. Actually, it's not really new, but it's new to me because I just found out about it about <clears throat> probably a few hours ago. But um, I remember doing a tutorial on how to use Blender or ProLighting Skies, an older version of it for 2.79 and 2.8 and above with the note system and all that. But with this add-on, which is free and, and open source, it makes the whole process of using HDRI skies a lot easier in Blender 2.8 and above. And this is the site we can do download it from. Got a long bit of a tongue twister there, but there are two versions from the uh, developer, 2.8 and 2.81 and above. I'm going to use this version because this is for 2.81 and above. That's the version I'm using right now. And once you've downloaded it, I'll walk you through the process of installing it in the Blender. And we'll use it from there. So once you've downloaded it onto your system, click on Edit. And then Preferences. And you're going to navigate to where you've installed it on your computer. Click on Install. And I've put mine in a folder that I've created called Blender Add-ons. Let me click on that. And go to Easy HDRI. Zip. Click on that install add-on and then once that's uh, shown up in the list you check the uh, click on the checkbox and that installs it permanently into blender now once you've had it on the panel which is on the tool panel you'll see that there's nothing in there and it says this list is empty because it wants you to actually navigate to where you've installed it or show the add-on where you've installed the the uh, ACRI images uh, on your computer. Now with this add-on you don't have to use ProLighting Skies so I'm using this as an example but any HDRI image you've you've got on your computer where you've downloaded it from HDRI Haven or whatever you can use it with this add-on but for those of you who, who have uh, the old version of ProLighting Skies this is an extra bonus for you so in order to navigate to where you've installed for me where I've nav what I do is this I go to edit and then I go to preferences and I'm going to click down on this and from the drop down menu this is the file path on my particular computer where I can navigate to where I've installed or have the HDRI images on my computer on your computer it'll be different but in order to find out where your add-ons are for a blender on your computer system follow this trail so for me it's C the C drive so I want to click on that uh, C drive there it is and then users so I'm going to click on double click on that RGB that's a folder that the computer created for me or I created for myself actually app data double click on that roaming double click and this is blender foundation it's been shortened because it's kind of long and this description but blender foundation let me navigate to where that is and there it is and then blender and these are all the versions of blender that I'll have on my computer now on your computer it would be different depending on how many versions of blender you have on your computer but where I have my pro lighting skies add-on is in 2.79 now like I mentioned earlier you can use this add-on to navigate or to scroll through any of your HDRI images that you've installed on your computer, whether you've created one, uh, a folder for yourself where you stored your HDRI images, or you're using Blender or you're using ProLighting Skies, an older version. Navigate, this is where we're navigating to, to where we've saved the ProLighting Skies folder. So I'm going to click on 2.79, click on Scripts, and then click on Add-ons. And then I'm going to navigate to Pro Lighting Skies Ultimate. Click on that, and HDRIs, and these are all my HDRIs for Pro Lighting Skies. So I'm going to left click on this to highlight this uh, address here. Right click and copy. And we're doing all this to show the add-on where we've installed our HDRI images on our computer. So I'm going to left click in there left click on this address bar control V to paste press enter 
and then click accept and there it is and in, the, in order for you to see it in your viewport you have to click on create world nodes let's click on that now the good thing about this besides it being besides you being able to use it uh, with any HDRI image it, you can also use this not only in cycles but also in Eevee which I didn't know until a few minutes ago that's why I'm doing this tutorial but in Eevee the render viewport that I have it set to is Eevee so I'm going to click on this and once I've done that and there you go and I've seen that when it comes to Eevee and cycles there's not really any kind of difference here we're going to look through this through our camera so I'm going to go to view Align viewport, align active camera to view, and so we can see through our view here, through our camera, excuse me. And here it is in EV, and then cycles. I'm going to click on cycles, go to GPU, and it doesn't look any different. It looks exactly the same, but with EV, obviously it's a lot faster than cycles. So let's go back to Eevee so I can showcase we can showcase and see what this does in Eevee. Because it's the same result basically. And we're going to turn on some of these options here so we can get more of an effect of the environments, the sky environments and this viewport. Turn on bloom, turn on this is usually in reference to reflections and like in reflective images, mirrors, bodies of water, so on and so forth. We're going to click on that also. Go to shadows and make sure we click on high depth shadow. And we're going to pivot around so we can see what this does because the bloom part really, really makes this add on stand out. And this is what I'm referring to with the bloom. Let me get rid of this light here. Delete that. But when we turn off bloom, you can see that has no, no effect. There's no, no uh, camera rays, I guess you call them. Because if you're looking at this through a camera lens, the uh, the lens or sun rays, when they reflect off the camera, you see, you know, distortion somewhat in the camera lens. But Bloom really emphasizes that quite a bit. So you can see that it really interacts with the cube really nicely. Now we're going to look at the add-on, what it has to offer us. Now you can toggle through the load image part. So you can go through each uh each sky in your folder one at a time just by toggling through here which is great but if you want to see all your HDRI images that you have for this particular folder all at once just click on that left click on it and it will bring everything up for you so you can see everything at once you can choose what you want to as soon as you want to choose it let me click on that sky and that looks pretty cool and it has a lot of options let's go back to where the sun is and as I said before, when it comes to the appearance of it in cycles, it looks the same way as it does in Eevee. But Eevee is obviously faster than cycles, so this is a lot better. So we're going to increase the strength of the sun so we can see what that does. And as you pull this up, you increase the value of the sun strength, it gets brighter. And you can also increase the strength of the sky also by dialing this up, and that makes it kind of blown out. You can left click and click on reset to default value, which is kind of dark. That's not the default value. I think it was at one. And do the same thing with the, the strength of the sky. This might take it down to zero, but it does. Okay, it does. That's where it was before zero. That's good. And it has a whole lot of other, a few other options here. Uh, background display, the color. You can change the color of the sky also. Let's see what that does. So when you click on the down arrow the options and you have more options here and let's change it to let's see let's change it to red and then in order to see the effect of that color change uh, you increase the factor and yeah it's kind of an apocalyptic kind of look kind of like end of days but yeah let's let's turn off all these other the grid and all the lines by clicking on that so we're going to get a better view of what we're looking at here yeah, we can reset that back to what that was before. But you know, it's it's, oh, it's open source, so it does have a couple of, 
you know issues when you reset it back to its default value just goes to black instead of going to white but that's not really a big deal uh, you can change the saturation you can reset it, the default values here also which is great and one issue that uh, Pro Lightning Skies had is this black part at the bottom. People would always complain about that. And I did a tutorial on that and, and how to fix this. But with this particular add on, you can actually just change the rotation of uh, the sky, and that will eliminate the uh, dark bottom part of the HDRI image texture. Let's, let's give that a shot here. Let's pull that down and pull that down, and there you go. So yeah, this is a it's a new add-on to me. It's new because I've just found it out a few hours ago. But this is a recent. Let me call it a recent add-on for us to look at. And it's really great. It's really easy to use. It's got more options here also. You can toggle through uh, some um, settings that it has here. Let's click on that. Yeah, this is a cleanup option. You, you can clean up a lot of the HDRI aspects of it that you might not need, which is great. And it's got um, a great display, a great option for toggling through your HDRI images. Uh, a lot of options that you actually need to implement this as a beginner in Blender. So yeah, this is a great add-on. I'm glad you guys were able to see it. We were able to see it together, actually. And I hope this was helpful to those of you who are watching the video. And I really appreciate you guys who have subscribed and those of you who will subscribe in the future. And once again, really thank you guys and appreciate you guys. And I will see you guys on the next one. All right. Adios.